Richard Thiele is one of the world's leading researchers on acidification. He helped hatcheries develop tactics to prevent massive oyster larvae die-offs by carefully monitoring the pH of seawater. It's been absolutely crucial. Something that simple has recovered 75% of the losses we had in larvae production just by being able to see this water and work around it. So there's a, a uh, important job for scientists that work with Taylor shellfish is keeping track of the pH of the water so they can save their their oysters from dying off like they did the first time because they didn't know it snuck up on them but feely warns that this is a short-term solution over the next 20 or 30 years these short-term attestation strategies won't work because as we continue to release more and more co 2 in the atmosphere and that will be taken up by the oceans eventually the oceans will be corrosive 50% of the time or 60% of the time within the next 30 or 40 years. Feely? So basically, if we don't stop, it's going to get worse, and none of these solutions are going to uh, make it. They're not going to solve it forever because we're just making the water more acidic. He has been tracking the changing ocean chemistry since the 1980s, and he's discovered that the oceans are already 30% more acidic than they were at the start of the Industrial Revolution. Recent models project that in the coming decades, pH will continue to drop. This would be a 100 to 150 percent increase of the acidity in the oceans by the end of the centuries. This and in that uh, graphic we just saw, you don't want the yellow or orange colors. This is a very dramatic change that has not been seen in, in the world oceans for more than 50 years. The change is happening so quickly that scientists worry marine animals won't have time to adapt. There's never been any time in the history of the planet that we know of uh, when the CO2 has increased as quickly as it is right now. Paul McElhaney leads the Ocean Acidification Lab at the NOAA Northwest Fisheries Science Center in Seattle. The animals that we're focusing on are ones that are economically and ecologically important and that we suspect might have some vulnerability to changes in the, the CO2 in the environment. He's trying to understand how the impact of acidification will ripple through the entire food web of the ocean. The difficulty is that if we're going to do anything about that, to change that trajectory, we need to do it now. By the time we wait till we actually see those, those changes in the species abundance, it will really be too late to do anything about it. That's why Washington State has made addressing ocean acidification a top priority. Governor Chris Gregoire convened a panel of scientists, policymakers, and industry officials to figure out what can be done locally to address this global problem. Uh, that governor used to be governor when this video was made. This video was published in 2016, so you can imagine uh, things have still been getting worse because we're still putting CO2 into the atmosphere. Among other things, they call for being a leader in reducing carbon emissions, limiting local water pollution if it's shown to exacerbate the problem, and developing long-term adaptation strategies for shellfish growers. Back at Taylor Shellfish, an answer can't come soon enough. Crews work around the clock, harvesting about 50,000 oysters each night. These shellfish will end up all over the world. We are the ones that are feeling the effects of this first. We're the ones where our industries and our people and our livelihoods are being affected by this. So we're leading the way. Protein from the ocean provides food for billions of people within our planet, and therefore we need to understand this and appreciate the significance of this and address it not just for local markets like Pike Place, but also to feed the world's appetite for Puget Sound seafood. Ocean acidification threatens their business, our region's reputation for seafood, and a Northwest way of life. So there you have it, some of the issues facing us because of ocean acidification, because of climate change, because of all the CO2 we're putting it in we're putting into the air.